today is uh, Sunday, August 28th, 2016, and this is the beginning of my interview with Corporal Ruppel at the Ruppel Residence in Ocala, Florida. My name is Sam Krakowski, and I will be the interviewer. Also present is Robert Ruppel, who will be operating the video. Uh, Corporal, could you please tell us your full name and address? Full name is Robert A. Ruppel. Ocala, Florida, zip 34471. Where were you born? Born in Brooklyn, New York. How old are you today? Today I am 86. Who were your parents and what were their occupations? My parents were Mildred and Anthony. Uh, my father was a farrier in New York and my mother pretty much uh, home. I don't remember what her work was originally. Do you have any siblings? Siblings. I have a brother, Jerry, sister, Janet, and a deceased brother, Ronald. Did any of them serve in the military? Uh, my brother Jerry served in the uh, U.S. Navy. How long did he serve? Uh, two years. What were you doing before you entered the service? Working in a aircraft plant in Farmington, New York. When did you enter the service? Entered the service on April 18th, 1951. Why did you pick this specific branch I that you chose? I did not pick it, I was drafted. Where did you serve? Served in uh, France. Where did you receive your basic training? Fort Dix, New Jersey. Can you describe your basic training? Basic training was tough. 14 weeks basic training and uh, it was kind of tough in the summer. August, uh, had uh, July and August in uh, 1951 was hot. <coughs> what weapons did you qualify on during your basic training? What? Uh, repeat that? What weapons were you qualified to use? Oh, I was, uh, they called it MOS uh, uh, Light Heavy Infantryman. Uh, light right being rifles and uh, heavy being uh, machine guns and mortars. What qualification level did you achieve? I don't know how to answer that. Is that, in the, is that rank? Uh, that's not rank. No qualification. I don't, uh, not a, I don't know how to answer that one. We'll just move on. What was your military specialty? Uh, military policeman. Where did, did you have to receive any special training for that? Yes, they sent me to uh, Amish, Germany for six weeks training. Was that different or similar to basic training? Mm, no, different. Learning all about the, uh, what you have to know as far as uh, police duties and uh, security duties. Different. Do you recall your instructors? Mm, no. Long time ago. How did you adapt to military life? Uh, I took to it pretty, pretty fast, pretty fast. I knew, uh, knew what had to be done, and uh, it was just a shame being that far away from home. Were you married at the time? No, just engaged. What do you recall about the barracks or the food or the social life? Uh, barracks was uh, was good. Every once in a while, you gotta. We, you, I got bumped with uh, some of the, the southern people that played their southern music all day. I remember that. Did you serve during the war? Yes, during the Korean War. 
Where did you serve? You said in France? Well, unfortunately, not Korea. They sent me to uh, France. Did you like being in France? Uh, it's okay. It's better than being in Korea, I know that. Were you part of any spe were you a part of any specific operations? Uh, no, no. I mean, there was no war going on over there, so it was uh, it was just a quiet military duty. What are some of the memories of going? What are some of your memories of going overseas? Memories were nine days on a boat, seasick, lying in a in the hammock most of the time, bologna sandwiches. After I got there, a few places I got to visit. I got to visit the uh, Eiffel Tower in France. Got to uh, visit the Folies Bergere in France. Got to visit uh, San Sebastian in Spain for a furlough. About it. That was the highlights. How did you travel there by boat? You said uh, nine days boat each way, and from to uh, boat to Germany. Got sent to Germany first for processing. That's where they assigned me military police, and then by train to uh, La Rochelle, France. Were you issued any special equipment? No, nothing at the time. Were you ever in combat? No, fortunately, no. Did you see any kinds of action? No. Did you ever witness any casualties or any uh, kinds of destruction? No, only casualty. I was uh, assigned uh, for, I don't know how many months, to the Criminal Investigation Division, and the only uh, the uh, fatality I came up with on one case where some poor fellow uh, tried to board a small boat at the dock, slipped in between and got crushed and drowned, and uh, I had to be a witness at the, uh, at the autopsy. That was it. That's the only fatality I saw during the, my service. Did you admire your commanding officers? Yes, they were, they were all pretty good. I had no trouble with any of them. Did you admire the people you served with? Definitely, definitely. had a good group. What kinds of friendships did you form during your service? Uh, I ended up in, in the military police. We, we had uh, automobile duties where I had a partner every day. I remember, don't remember his first name, but a fellow named, southern fellow named Lee, who uh, naturally I saw every, every working day. And uh, I guess the group MPs was probably another another dozen, but uh, everybody got along. We all, we all helped each other, and we pretty much helped everybody else that uh, didn't need anything without, uh, without any problems. Did you have any best friends? Uh, I guess this fellow Lee became one of my best friends. Had another, another fellow, Rogers. I remember him. Actually, I had two, uh, when I was assigned to the CID, I had two warrant officers that were my bosses. I'm trying to think of their names. Uh, one was a Tony Solano. And I kind of forget, I spent more time with uh, Tony than the, uh, than the second one, but uh, the, we, were with, we were together for quite a few months. How did you stay in contact with your family back home? Uh, what was that? How did you stay in contact with your family back oh, home? Oh, I wrote, uh, I wrote uh, my fiance uh, almost every day, almost every day, we uh, uh, found the time. 
What did you do for recreation when you were off duty? Uh, uh, recreation was just uh, the usual. They had their uh, basketball courts, uh, horseshoe courts, table tennis, uh, uh, a little bit of uh, a small restaurant across the street from the barracks. We got a good ham and cheese sandwich. Uh, about it, pretty quiet. Did you get enough sleep? Sleep I got. At the end of the day, uh, with the driving around most days in the, uh, in the car, uh, I was tired and uh, I slept well. Where were you when the war ended? Uh, ended up, I think I was uh, in Bordeaux, stationed in Bordeaux, France. Uh, oh, excuse me. War ended. I was. Uh, I was home already when the war ended. I came home. I was. I got home on. Uh, oh, I got <clears throat> discharged on uh, March 26, 1953. I think the Korean War ended in September 1953. I think, but I was home before the war ended. How long were you overseas? Overseas were. Most of my 24th see, I went in September, so uh, October, November, December, January, February, March, uh, 18 months. How were you received by your family when you came home? Great, great. My mother, my mother, my mother-in-law, and my fiance met me in uh, Jersey, and uh, cheering at the dock when I got off, I spotted them, and that was one happy day. A long time. How did you adjust to civilian life? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. I got back. They offered me my uh, my old job back in the uh, aircraft plant, and I worked. Uh, went back there for a few months. What have you done since leaving the military? Since then, uh, had many jobs, many jobs. Uh, no. Two of, the, two of the longest ones being uh, two 14-year jobs, 14 years at a Kenyan instrument company and 14 years at a Unimation Incorporated in uh, Danbury, Connecticut. What are some of your most memorable experiences? In the, in the service or out of service? In the service? In the service. In the service. Uh, well, a few things I recall. We. Uh, one day we uh, stopped to wash the car. Wash the uh, we had a, we had new Chevrolets for for vehicles. My friend, uh, my buddy Lee and I stopped to wash the car on the way back. Pulled the, alongside a stream and uh, haste to wash the car. We ended up drenching everything around it and getting stuck in the mud. Instead of driving back home. We had to get uh, towed back home. Uh, everybody remember that. We took that for a while. Second one happened to be also with a car. We, uh, we, we had a cruise all over France to different, different uh, stations. We, we broke a fan belt one day out in the middle of nowhere. We had, we, we were starting to overheat. We said we'd go up to one hill and see what, what's over the hill. We went over, coasted down, and you would never believe it, we found a, a station with a, with a Chevrolet service sign on it in the middle of France. And coasted down there and got a new fan belt. That was, that was odd. One in a million. How did your military service impact your feelings about war or about the military? Uh, Nothing special. Nothing special. I was just happy that I, I did not actually get it, get into combat. Very lucky. How did your wartime experience affect your life? Uh, it was an experience. I said most people had to do it, and they, uh, it probably helped. Uh, probably helped on how to how to follow instructions and uh, got used to having bosses uh, once they started working. It helped. Did you have post-traumatic stress, or do you know anyone who did? No, no, no stress from that job, no.
What effect did serving in the military have on your faith or your spirituality? Uh, I would say nothing special. I was the same, same coming out as when I went in. No, no changes. Would you want your son or daughter to enter the military? If they were fortunate enough not to have combat and had a, a so-called desk job, it would be a good experience in order to learn how to take orders and get things done. Combat, I would not like to see anybody in combat. No. Have you remained in contact or re reunited with any fellow veterans? Um, no. I have, a, I have my discharge list in my drawer with, with quite a few of them that left with me, but uh, I, they, they all live pretty distant and I never had in touch with any, not one. Are you a member of any veteran organizations? No. What are some life lessons you learned in the military? What was that? What are some life lessons you learned in the military? Life lessons? Well, to get used to getting along with a group, you've got to learn how to, uh, how to help each other and stand up for each other, even though it was in combat, even in our little duties here, we, uh, we learned to learn to help, learn to follow instructions, that's for sure. You learn how to talk back to anybody. At home, you can. In the Army, no. What lessons would you pass on to today's generation? Well, well I could say if they were unfortunate ever to have a, a draft again, like I said, I wouldn't expect anybody basically to be joining the service unless they were having trouble finding a job at home. But uh, other than that, if they if they got in, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a, a bad experience to, to to learn a few things. Period. And if time goes fast if you can be fortunate enough to only serve two years. You got drafted. Draft was two. If you have to join, I think it's at least three or four years if you join the service now. But uh, it, Good experience if you can stay out of trouble. Is there anything I forgot to ask you about your military experience? No, I think you were pretty thorough. Good, uh, good, uh, Would you like, is there any stories that you'd like to share? Let me see. Because we have plenty of time. One short story. I said I'd keep, keep them short. They don't have to be short. No. It'll be as long as you no. like. No, no, I could just um, not uh, actually. I, as far as talking Korea, I might as well just mention that how fortunate I was. One of your previous questions was, uh, what was I qualified for? They gave us I don't know what the words MOS stand for, but it's MOS Heavy Infantry Light Infantryman. At the time, the week before. We were ready to ship out. The, uh, <clears throat> all the personnel were sent to Korea. That's what they needed, light heavy infantrymen. The week that we were supposed to ship out, they got worried that they had enough heavy, light heavy infantrymen. And they sent us to, to France, to the uh, European Command. And while we were on the ship, they told us that the that week we were on the ship, they went back and they needed heavy, light heavy infantrymen in Korea again. So we were right in the middle and we were lucky, very lucky. And uh, other than that, uh, there were no, no big experiences. At the, uh, so nothing, uh, being a military policeman, uh, we ended up no, uh, nothing ever drastic happened that we have. Uh, Never got into any large fights or brawls. There was a minimum amount of a little arrest for something small. I uh, did have one experience where I had never driven a truck before, and uh, I had a volunteer to drive a group of uh, rowdies back from town in uh, one of these big six by Rios, which I was kind of nervous, but I did, I did drive a five mile ride. I, uh, I preferred to drive in the jeeps and the, uh, and the 
new Chevy sedans. And that's about it. Glad to be home. Do you have any questions? Got any questions, Robert? Robert L., did I cover it all right? Um, did I answer the questions? I, what what I would you so. ask? Well, I don't don't know embarrassing questions, no, please. It's not embarrassing. It's just cool to hear about, I guess, because I've never really asked you before, to hear about your service. And it's cool to know that you kind of went to all these places, because you went to Germany, France, Spain. That's cool. Yeah. Um, did you make, um, I remember you told me a story. Didn't you have a friend during basic training um, named Robert as well? Wasn't that a, a, a thing with you? Um, I remember you told me about that. Um, a basic? Yeah, you had a friend named Robert. Um, oh, 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 my friend Duke. Oh, Duke, okay. Oh, Duke, yes, I can relate to Duke. I had a friend Duke that was a little younger than my group, so when we started getting drafted, uh, he was he was he was out of the draft at the time. So the day before I went into the service, he stops in. He says, uh, "You know what?" He says, "I joined the army today." He joined the army today. He said. So he ended up. I didn't think I would see him for a while, but they sent us to uh, Fort. Uh, they sent us on a bus to Fort Devens, Massachusetts, for processing. And then we went to Fort Dix, and I ended up seeing him at Fort Dix, and he ended up in the next barracks, even though he was a, he was a, he enlisted, just happened to be next door, and he uh, he was a hot shot. He ended up you weren't allowed to have any automobiles, and when you do basic training, but he had a new or uh, fairly new chartreuse convertible Ford at home, and he had his parents bring it, park it off base, and managed to get to it once in a, time, once in a while. We, uh, we ended up, every chance he got, he, he went to that automobile. He had the nerve, we had a 12 mile, my group had a 12 mile hike at, on, the, on the basic training range, and uh, we were getting ready to go back and son of a gun got he got a hold of his car and he rides past us with trekking twelve miles and he rides past us waving and his shot was wonderful to rub it in a little bit. But he did everything he did everything wrong. And I uh, actually he, he got in some kind of trouble overseas. I think I I saw him once overseas somewhere. And he, uh, I had heard he, he got in an accident. He, he flipped over a motorcycle and ended up sliding, I don't know how long on his leg, got a steel plate in his leg and uh, survived. But that was the last I heard him. He never, he never bothered to, uh, riding or anything. Never know what happened to him. Oh, yeah, I've been a name, Duke Van Volkenberg. That's a name. Okay. Cool. Any other questions from Robert Al? In case you have to go into service someday. Um, no, um, how does your service relate to your brother's? Do you, um, did he have a similar thing my or did he a little bit more? <coughs> my brother Joey was also very lucky. Two lucky, uh, two lucky veterans. He, uh, he's three years younger than me. And while I was in the service, uh, he became draft age. And when the draft came, this very seldom happened. They had enough. They had enough men in the service in the army at the time. And they, when they, when they stood up on line, his group at the draft board, they gave an opportunity to sign up for the navy for two years which is unheard of. If you joined the Navy, you had to join for three. But he got the opportunity, he said, we, we, uh, we were given the opportunity to go in the Navy, so he went in the Navy for two years, never on a ship. Two years in the Navy, never on a ship. Wow. And get, imagine getting stationed, he spent one year on the east coast of Florida, and the other year on the west coast of Florida. Wow. 
So he uh, he had it good. I only saw him actually once in the service. He, uh, I met him down in Baltimore, Maryland, one once with a couple of friends. I got a picture of him somewhere in my 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 drawer. But uh, very fortunate to have two years in the Navy and uh, and also no combat. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. That's all I'd ask, I guess. That's all you got? Okay, that's all I got. Good. I'll say I'm glad to be out. The time went too fast here. It's been a long time ago. Out in, out in uh, 53, 63 years ago. Wow. How old were you when you left the service? I left the service, uh, let's see, I was uh, in 53, I was 23. How long after you left the service did you get married? I got married pretty early. Got out in uh, March and got married in uh, August. A few months. What did you just, we just had what, 62 What's years? That? What was the anniversary you just had? 62? My anniversary was just 63. 63. 63 years. Ah. Shooting for 65, 70, and 75. In that order. This interview needs to go on for at least 30 minutes, so is there any good stories that you have? Oh, any more stories? What do you got? How many minutes you got? About? Four minute story? Oh my god, let me see. Let me see. Well, let's see, part of the, uh, part of the uh, criminal investigation division being assigned there worked out pretty well. What happened is the, uh, these two warrant officers needed some uh, some lower grade person to help and do the, the paperwork and the driving and whatever. So uh, the funny part is they were, their office was in France was down at the French French Secret Service office, French Surete they called it. Okay, and at the time you had a lot of uh, Frenchmen that didn't like the Americans in the country even today, okay, so they did not like to see anybody with U.S. uniforms if they could help it at their office. <clears throat> so my friends wore civilian clothes, my two armed officers, and they told me if I wanted to work with them, I had to get my hands, I should send home for your civilian clothes and get whatever you can. So I sent home for the few civilian clothes I had home, all right, and uh, ended up being able to go to uh, the civilian clothes to the job every day, which was great. And I don't remember recall how many months it was, but uh, trained up down at the uh, headquarters with the clothes, went on our various assignments with them. Uh, basically, did the driving. They had a they had a, a new black Chevrolet, uh, two sets of license plates, military, and they were allowed to use it on their time off. They just Switch the plate, put another plate on. Uh, I, when they uh, got an opportunity to go on uh, go on furlough, where as I said I went to San Sebastian, Spain for three or four days, I also wanted to take the opportunity to buy some clothes. So I ended up getting clothes there, it was very inexpensive at the time. The, all, the, all the expenses were were great in Spain. I went. I remember in Spain. I, I had, I had a, a the boarding, the boarding, boarding, and two, two meals for ten dollars in San, San Sebastian. I remember that. And I ended up getting a, some a waiter that spoke perfect English, and he directed me around, directed me to the stores to be able to get the clothes. And uh, things worked out fine. Brought those clothes home and wore them for a while. The, uh, the time ran out after, uh, uh, I don't know what time, but they, uh, they kind of got to me and realized that I had a, I had a, good, a good job at being with the, uh, with the CID. So they told me that uh, they wanted me to uh, me up for three years, come over and saw me if I wanted to re-enlist for three years and stay with the outfit. I said, 
no extra three years for me, no extra days for me. When, when March or April come up in 1953, I want to go home. So within days, I lost my good job, and I was back in a military police uniform. And they sent me down to uh, Bordeaux, France. Originally, I guess I spent half my time in La Rochelle and half my time in, uh, in uh, Bordeaux. But I ended up with a, with a little tougher job as far as guard duty at the, uh, at the front gate, saluting all day, saluting the officers all day. That was tiring. Uh, one, one bad job one night, a little nervous. Uh, guard duty at an ammunition depot, all by yourself. Scary, marching outside, back and forth with your, with your rifle. One thing, I, one duty I got, I didn't like that well. Actually, uh, for it only lasted a week, prison guard. Prison guard for the, having to uh, march the prisoners to the, to the restaurant to eat and back. And to walk around with a carbine on your arm. Nobody gave us any trouble. One instance we had one of the other MPs unfortunately discharged his 45 by mistake, and you get a you get a summary. I don't know how it goes on your record as a summary court martial on his records as far as unlawful firing. I think nobody got hurt, but uh, he did have that firing. It. But uh, that was about it. That was about it. So big experience. Remember it all. So I use up my four minutes, so I did good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome.